everybody. Welcome to the second installment of the live video show, Turn the Page. Today we have a really good guest that I've played with for many years. We've done shows. Uh, in fact, we did one of the funnest shows I think I've ever done in this area was our Woodstock show about a month and a half ago up at uh, Hard Road to Hoe, right? That's the one. Well, I tell you, it was one of the fun shows I've ever done. Um, we played all original Woodstock songs. We had a female singer. We had Bob and Greg Kennedy, the paper's owner. And we did a fun thing and uh, dressed up like hippies. And I had a really good time, I have to admit. You had quite the fro going on. I had the fro. I was, uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. But I, 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 you know, I did get the hippie sign wrong. Okay, I, I went down and just like that. So well, I didn't have symbol. Yeah, it was more the like piece, a swastika. It was like yeah. I really caught a lot of you know heat from the real people of that generation, which kind of brings me into the interview, which is my one burning question, Bob. Were you back in those days? Were you part of that movement, the hippie movement? Uh, sure, sure. Come on, we got to have I, some. I had a hippie movement or two, yeah. So, were you, no really, were there like some major festivals you went to, I mean... Well, yeah, I missed Woodstock on account of, I was in Washington and uh, it was in New York and I uh, was actually uh, 14 at the time and I was starting out to uh, hitchhike to it and then I uh, realized that, uh, you know, it was just way too far away, it was really, <laughs> by the time I got there it would be over. So I so you sat, you very okay. dejectedly and mournfully went home and watched it on the news and uh, played all my records and played my guitar. And so my my statement's good. true. You were part of that generation to be well, able I was, to I was in the, to try to hitch out to which talk you know. The general I mean, feel of things. Uh, <laughs> um, the times they were changing. You know, yeah. In, in those days, quite a bit there was this there was this general feeling of brotherhood and goodwill that was sort of spreading around. Didn't really last very long, but uh, well, you got it was into it. Great while it lasted, yeah. Bob is part of living history, and that was it. Kind of showed up in that show we did the other night because it just felt like Woodstock, and it was it was a really it was, good atmosphere. It was a lot of fun in that regard. Yeah, yeah. which kind of brings me to my um, main question: Who I always start out like like who are your major musical influences? Well, that's a loaded question. I'm. Are you all Very types? eclectic in my taste, and so I, like someone asked me the other day, who, who did I think was the best guitar player? I couldn't answer that question. I, like, well, in which genre? I mean, the best right. jazz player, or the I best say that blues too. player, the best rock player? Or, it's just too many good players out there, and there's too much good music to, to really categorize them that way. Well, then the let me best, let me put it. Who who kind of influenced? Yeah, who influenced you? Most everybody that was playing at that time. I remember uh, I was profoundly impressed with uh, uh, Led Zeppelin. Of course. And, yeah, I just like, wow, I've got to learn to do that. And that's what really started me off into. Mine was Deep Purple, and, but. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't discover them until a few months after well, <laughs> okay. I discovered Led Zeppelin. And uh, I tried very very hard to go to a Led Zeppelin concert and I couldn't make it. But the very next concert that came around, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, was oh. the first first concert I went to and I was absolutely I would have given anything to see that it show. Was, it was one of the really good ones. But uh, I was just completely blown away by that. Was that when you were starting to progress, you know, on the guitar and things about that time? <laughs> Well, was, uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was learning to actually be able to put three and four chords together and make something yeah. that sounded like a song, you know. And uh, it just inspired me to no end. You know, the things that uh, you know they could do with guitar music. Exactly. I was uh, I was all over that for a long time, until my third concert, which is my third major influence, uh, that completely changed the direction of my life. And that was when uh, a friend of mine and I went to a concert. And I thought it was strange because our parents, who were normally against us going to these rock concerts, actually his mom drove us to the concert. Yeah. And uh, we walk into this place, and we're the only two white people in the whole place. And everybody is dressed to the nines. And I'm thinking, we're in trouble. We're in the wrong place. What are we doing here? And 
it was just incredible. And so we're we're hanging out there, and uh, the band comes out and does some music, you know, and kind of a it was the whole thing was set up like this big show, not like a concert that I was kind of used to going to. It was a show, and uh, the band played for a few numbers, and then the announcer came on and announced uh, the person that was performing, and out comes BB King. Now, this was my first introduction to the blues, and uh -huh. I was just taken to another world. I was up there, like I think my chin was resting on the stage, and uh, there I never was much security you. in those days, and that was it. I was hooked on the blues ever since then. All right, let's see. This interview is going to be fun, because I've really never known any of this stuff about I've heard you play so many types of music at so many jams and things. You'll come up one night and do one thing, and the other night, the other. And, um, you know, the blues did the, did the exact same thing for me. That's what started me on a guitar back when I first joined the Marines, uh, was blues music. And I lived in Washington, D.C. And I, I would go to these little clubs, and it would just change me. I'd go, I have to do that. I have to do the blues. You know, yeah. so I, I totally understand that. And now, you know, I play in King Biscuit, and you come play with us all the time. And it's the real blues. So, um, you know, some of the things I really wonder is... Uh, just to tell you, Bob owns the music store, it used to be in Chelan, and um, now it's in Brewster, and we'll get to that later, talk a little bit about that, but uh, I mean, you, to, to really go that far with music, and to buy a music store, I mean, you must have a high, really high level of loving music. So it's, well, you know, just you know, talk about it. I mean, because first of all, it's more accurate to say the store owns me, and it's, uh, it's, that's probably it's true. more <laughs> born out of uh, I couldn't keep a regular job, and okay, make enough money to okay. play in music. He's a hippie, you know, okay. Uh, that led to me owning the music store more than more than anything else. But it it, it does have its uh, its moments, you know. It, I love uh, everything to do with music, and so. You know, it's all, it's kind of a natural. If I gotta have a day job, you know, being part of a music store, I'm helping people to. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna lead into another question. Um, we've all had special nights, okay, uh, playing or something. Describe like one of your best nights playing, whether at home or on a club scene, you know, whatever, oh, you know. Man. <laughs> or you know, like I saw you last winter one time playing the bass, and you and you were playing with Greg, and it was one of the best classic rock shows I've ever seen in this valley. I've seen you on a roll. I've seen you do things. Uh, all of a sudden, you'll pull out Hendrix. That was a long time ago at Scotty's when we were doing those jams. You know, are there any or just types of moments that really click with you? You know, when is when do you like really get rolling? Because I've seen you just go into this thing that uh, I go. That's Bob. Whoa. Yeah, that's another tough question to answer, my friend. It just uh, happens? Well, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it just happens. And uh, I'm frankly surprised, uh, as a surprise that night, when you uh, complimented my uh, my bass playing. Because I, I guess it's because I'm very highly self-critical. And I end up, at the end of a, a performance, often going, ah, I could have done that. And well, we all do that. I'm surprised, you know, when someone says, oh, that was really good. I'm like, really? Thank you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm always striving for a little more, a little better. Yeah, I think we all do. That next run, yeah. So it's hard for for me to, to say, oh, this was my best shining moment. If I had to pick it, it would actually be at times when I'm playing with people like you guys and you let me play and we, we kind of get into that music zone, which is the really groove. what it's all about. And we're all in the same groove and we're no longer performing a song. We're, we are one yeah. in the treble clef, you know. I've That's, been there. I've been there with you up there. Those are the there. moments, whether I'm performing perfectly or imperfectly or not, but when we're, we're all together there, yeah. we're like, it's like touching you feel God. It. You Everything know? is right. right. The tones, the loudness, and then people just are loose to go and create. Hey, I got one question. You did something pretty profound in Cambodia. Do you want to talk about that? I had heard. Wearing the shirt. Yeah. Um, I can't read it because I'm on my glasses. So why don't you read it to him? But uh, I mean, I was really impressed to hear that you had done that. And you know, talk about your work over there and what happened. Well, that was a very interesting story. So, show you the logo. 
Okay. This was an accident that I'm wearing this shirt, by the way. This is not staged. <laughs> okay. I got hooked up a while back with an outfit called Musicianaries International. Musicianaries was a the brainchild of a fellow named Bobby Michaels, who was a twice nominated, excuse me, twice Grammy nominated uh, performer, and uh, who uh, um, most recently, um, not just last year, passed away. God rest his soul. And uh, he had the notion that uh, there were no musicians on the mission field, and that there should be, and that music was an important part of reaching people and touching their lives. And so he came up with this outfit that he called Musicianaries, which was the idea of uh, taking music to the mission field, to be redundant. Uh, I can't describe it any better than that without explaining what we do. So we go, um, we raise money over here, everybody pays their own support, and everybody raises money for all the expenses of what we do and we go over there and we do um, we go to the rural and uh, poorer areas in Cambodia and we do uh, rice distributions we gave away uh, 360 tons of rice last year I think it was and uh, hold medical clinics and hold concerts and we do mm, I, I guess impromptu kind of music clinics as well Cool. We do many concerts. Whenever we're at a rice distribution, someone is performing something. And we try to get the, the audience involved, and it's really just so much fun because most of these people, they, they don't have a lot of joy, as you can imagine. They're just right. trying to eke out a bare subsistence living, something uh, we in America here have no idea what that's about, really. But uh, they're all very stoic and stone-faced when we start. And by the time we're done, they're laughing and they're singing and they're dancing. And it's like an, just a wonderful experience for them, and that just blesses us like crazy. So, well, Jeff, tell them about, about the uh, getting on the national TV. I mean, I thought oh, yeah. I thought that was like, whoa! I'm a big star in Cambodia. I'm known as Mr. Bob. We were on a, uh, I guess it would be the equivalent of Entertainment Tonight over here. It's the largest viewed television program in uh, Cambodia. They heard what we were doing and they gave us uh, their entire show. And wow. Our whole lineup of uh, performers performed and they did interviews and interviewed Bobby about uh, what the thing was all about. And it was, uh, it was a really good time. Well that's just amazing. amazing. You know I, I really I believe myself that music is going to be the a big ministry wave of the future. I really, I've always known that, it, and it's been like that, and it's getting. But I think it's going to get better and better and better. Well, you know, there's very few people who are not touched by music. Yeah, I've met a couple in my life that were just disinterested, care not whether they heard music. Or very not, few. Very, very few. few. Yeah. You know, it, it, music touches a universal chord, and it's my my personal belief. You know, is that God created music, and when we we're in when we're touched by music, you know, and part of what's in us that cries out for that is a yearning for God. And in a small way, because of that creative magic, when we are touched by music, we're connected in that way. And I think that's part of what happens when we're all in that zone we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's a unison up on stage that uh, is spiritual to me, and it's probably the, some of my best memories of when I've really clicked in the zone. And I know what you mean, and I, I totally believe it's the same thing. You know, God created music, and it's a great way to get in touch with Him. Um, what I want to do is just kind of go to like, where are you going now with music, and do you have some goals, or are you playing with anybody? What's your kind of future goals, or anything, or? Well, one of the downsides of the music stores, uh, and anybody thinking that's a good idea to own your own business, think again. It's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, it it actually detracts from my um, my time and my ability to play music and pursue musical things. So that's something that I would wow. like to yeah. uh, kind of back off from. If I would like to get the. Uh, I, I'm starting to write some stuff again. I, 
fourth or fifth installment I, of writing Good. over the years. That's great. And uh, I've just sort of trashed all the early stuff, but and I really want to try and throw together a record, even if I make it myself. You know, just just to see if what's in my head will actually sound good when I hear it back. You know, I have all this stuff in my head when I'm playing. I, I, I want to do that. I hear the drums. Yeah. I think this would sound good like this, and I'd like to create in that fashion. And uh, so that's kind of where I'm going. I've never really been able to put or keep a band together. Uh, I know what that one feels like. Constraints <laughs> uh, largely, you know, the time it takes to put in it. And so most of my playing is just by the good graces of people like you when you're playing somewhere and let me sit in. But uh, every now and then I do a gig, and I hope to kind of get away from the store more and more and pursue the playing of music more, because that's where my heart is. Yeah, you're diehard, Bob. But we should talk about your store, because um, there's a real service you've got in this valley. Um, we were talking about your strings and how good they are, and I've been playing those Kirk Mangings for about three years now, and never had a problem. Love the tone. There's a lot you. The one thing about your store is I've always gone in there and found a special guitar that if I didn't have five guitars in a life, I would have bought right then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's a you know a lot of people who don't understand instruments don't really understand the good deals you're given there, and I'm 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 making a spiel because it's the truth. So. Um, and I know instruments pretty well, and uh, I've always gone in there and found something really unique, really good for a really good price. And um, I think people should know more about it, and that you moved to Brewster. So why don't you tell us a little about you know what's going on with the store, how they can get in touch with you, you know? Well, because I've well, had emergency like strings. Uh, trust me, <laughs> I called him, Bob. I got a gig. And I meet him in Chelan, even though he's in Brewster. We did that the other night with a harmonica. I mean, there's a lot of options here, but you can meet a lot of musicians' needs now, too. So, tell us about the story. Well, that's... I've been a, a musician and a consumer a lot longer than I've been a businessman. And as such, I'm not that good of a businessman. I never pursued the, uh, the financial end like... Uh, probably should have. I've just always pursued the musical end. It's always been my desire to put music in the hands of people. And in terms of supply, you know, I try to keep you know, good quality stuff and I try to uh, keep something unique and interesting. I'm always well, the one thing in strange... You've always been able, Bob, to look up something that I've needed because a lot of times I need strange instruments with the harmonica, you know, or this or that. I've always seen you you know, pretty much be able to look up a wide variety of tubes for your amps, uh, all kinds of things, and get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do try to keep keep abreast of what's going on there. Yeah, well, you really do. Yeah, people think it's just a small music store, but you know, I've seen it time and time again. You can look up an exact tube, an exact harp. I play harmonica, which are many types, you know, and uh, so I mean that is available through that. What else you got going? And tell us about Bru the Brewster move. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, I, sh I should uh, do a commercial endorsement or something. Well, you yeah. can. You just got to buy me a store. beer. Hold the $99 acoustic guitar. That's right, the $99 acoustic well, we guitar. Well, you got to tell them about that and one bass. As if that wasn't enough. Whenever you buy an instrument at the music store, you get 25%. That's right, you heard correctly. 25% off of all accessories. Unbelievable, unheard of. Nobody else does it. Because I love you, I want your money, and I want to be your friend. <laughs> right on. Um, okay. Yeah, you so know the thing. Wait, no, you you get some unique instruments. You brought a bass, so you you carry some unique stuff. Tell us about that bass. I mean, right now, if oh, you still I just got this uh, eight-string fretless bass. This one you might not be able to buy. I haven't decided whether or not I want to keep it because it's pretty cool. It's a uh, setup. And Non-musicians will be hearing Greek here, but it's set up at the same concept as a 12-string. The, the four strings have matching octaves, so it gives it some really unusual tones. It was Being cool. Fretless, and with the, the sustain that you get on a fretless, it's real, real interesting sounds out of it. I really enjoy playing it a lot. Well, that's what I mean. I've been there so many times. You have a really unique instrument, and they're priced very well. Um, 
Uh, one thing uh, we were talking about the other night is that you might, you know, be trying to find a little little satellite somewhere in Chelan or area, you know, yeah. so that people could order it and their their you know products could be there, their guitar strings. Sure. Well, about the the move to Brewster was not really my choice. It's uh, originally it was. There's a lot of circumstances. I was kind of priced out of the neighborhood. Most people know about how the real estate went crazy around here. Yeah. So when my lease came due, uh oh, the Jack. money, the money, you know, heard of that around here, got before. jacked up quite a bit, and and uh, I, you know, I, my store was never geared for tourism. It was uh, geared more towards local musicians. So yeah, that kind of there's just a lot of factors there. Just uh, kind of made it necessary. No, I, understand, for me to I understand that one. Find a location I could afford and, and work out of. I was kind of ashamed to leave Salan without a music store because it's had one for almost 30 years now. And uh, I would love to find some willing business that's already existing to have a small section where they'll carry some of the stuff musicians need strings yeah. and picks and And that's it. And somebody and hears that on this interview, you like know. That. Bob could work something out with you. It would be nice to go pick up strings, whatever. He'll you he can bring it in. You call it in. He'll have it there by what at night. You it know, would six be or real seven. Real helpful for people. You know, those yeah. poor people had to come all the way up here from Manson the other day to get reeds for their kids. You know, band exactly. instrument. And, so we're yeah, kind of putting out a thing. call. Somebody you wants know. to work out a little satellite with. Uh, it it's not going to take a big area either. Just you know, can have basics. Yeah. That would be a real service to the, the community, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, Bob, we got to wrap it up here. But is there anything else you want to say about yourself, or you know, about the um, your music or anything that you want to bring out? Uh, I, uh, I like music. <laughs> dude, <Yeah>. right on. <laughs> yeah, I have guitar. Will travel reasonable rates. That's Bob's, uh, what's it called, The Music Store in Brewster, though, right? Or Music Store The, as I'm known in the phone book. All right. Well, okay, folks, we got to wrap it up here. This is Jeff Page with Turn the Page. This is our second installment of a live uh, interview with local musicians. We're going to try to do these about every two months. Uh, it's just fun to get to know your local musicians. And we'll have updates on the website, you know, just written. There might be some jams, jams coming up this winter, possibly at Ann's... Uh, Troy's Pizza, my neighbor, wants to do a real GM. So um, there's going to be some things, so keep in tune to this website, and we'll try to keep you updated. All right, good night, folks. Of course, musical information is always available at the music store.